Today we're making a monster mash. Last year I released a video called Mega Fermentation. We're going to be doing something very similar today. Instead of doing the fermentation with whole pieces of peppers or cut up peppers, we're actually going to make a mash. We're going to be using a five liter bucket, the same bucket I actually used last year. So let's go through some of these peppers that we're going to be using today. Over here we have some frozen ones actually from last year, October 2017. These are from this year, my Lakoto. These are just a real mix of peppers, again, from last year, 2017. And these are some seven pot habaneros. And these ones over there are carboneros. I've got quite a few of my frozen peppers. I'm just gonna weigh them out just to make sure that I don't go over half the amount of peppers as frozen rather than fresh. You could get away with more than half of your peppers being frozen, but I like to play it a bit safe. So half the peppers frozen or smoked. I'm sure you've seen some of my previous videos, but half of the peppers that haven't got any lactobacillus that they're all dead and half fresh. Let me just quickly weigh these. This is 969 grams of the frozen peppers. Uh, something else to point out is these peri peri peppers. They are mostly green. I'm going to add them in because I actually want to get a bit of that raw flavor in here. Green peppers won't really ferment very well. Uh, because we're doing a mash here, we're going to be mixing up a lot of the very ripe peppers I have with this here. And I'm sure that it'll be perfectly fine, but we'll keep an eye on it anyway. At the end of this process, we're going to be testing it with a pH meter, making sure that it has actually fermented through properly. There's 200 grams of super chilies, not a very, very hot pepper, but they've got some spice. Over here we have some Tabascos, Carboneros, and Cardi MOA Bonnets. Over here we have some Sugar Rush Peach. Over here we've got pepper juice, and uh, we're going to add those in. So let's see, that's 751 grams. So these little things, uh, they were meant to be KN peppers, but they ended up being something else. And they have quite a bit of spice. I did try one uh, a little bit hotter than probably the peri peri. So we're going to add those in as well. Then we're going to add in the super chilies. So we add those in. Something else I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some ripe jalapenos. This adds a nice bit of bulk, a bit of sweetness. And also my jalapenos are quite spicy this year. So a little bit of spice as well. The sauce isn't meant to kill you. This is not a terribly, terribly hot sauce. It's meant to be a good all rounder. It's going to have a lot of spice in it anyway, because some of the peppers I'm using are very spicy, especially here with these seven pot habaneros. Uh, those are very hot. Those are super hot. And in this bag over here, we have some butchalokias. I can see some white butchalokias. And I can see a few other spicy peppers in there. But I need to go and give these a quick rinse. The ones that have been frozen, they were clean before I froze them, so they're fine. The peppers are all nice and clean now. We just need to get rid of the stalks like that. And we're going to then weigh them all and see how much salt we're going to need. There we are. We have now destemmed all of these. Um, some of them have a little bit of the stem still on them. But don't worry about that too much. Just try and get as much of the stem off as you can. So let's weigh these out and see what we have. So let's just put that on there. 912 grams of the previously frozen peppers. And 2.6 kilograms in total there. We have a lemon. We're gonna throw in the whole thing with the rind as well. We're going to be adding in two onions. All we need to do is peel them. Nothing else, nothing special. We're not going to chop them up or anything. And we're going to have some garlic. I'm going to use a whole, I don't know what you call that, but all the cloves. <laughs> One more thing we're going to be adding today is cardamom. Now, this is something I've kind of fell in love with this year. I used it in a couple sauces and it made such a difference. I'm definitely going to be using it a lot more in the future, but I'm certainly going to be adding it to this one. So let's weigh these out. Let's see what we have. This is zero the bucket and add in the ingredients as well as the garlic. So that's 410 grams. Let's say three kilograms in total.
Before we add things to the blender, let's work out how much salt we need because we're going to be adding that into the blender in portions when we blend everything else together. So we have three kilograms of all our total ingredients and 2% of that is about 60 grams. I think, yeah, it's actually 60 grams. So 60 grams of salt is 2% of three and 90 grams of salt is 3%. So between 60 and 90, let's do it at 75 grams. Again, please remember when you are doing a fermentation, the salt needs to have no additives. Make sure that you have 100% salt. So 75 grams, that's what we're gonna add in here. And now it's time to get the blender ready. I'm such a kid when it comes to these things. I love blending things. It's just such fun. So let's add in the cardamom. I'm gonna add them all in to this first batch that we're gonna be blending. It's not a problem. We are still gonna be blending again once the fermentation finishes, like I mentioned before. So let's throw in some onions. Don't know how this is gonna work. Well, I'm just gonna feed it and see what happens. I'm gonna add in some of the salt. Put the lid back and let's make sure it's all connected up and let's give it a blend. I'm pretty happy with that, that's doing a good job. I'm gonna try and not breathe in fumes. It's looking pretty good. I'm quite impressed with that. My old blender, there's no way I could have done this. So we're just gonna add this straight into the bucket on top of the garlic. So we've got the bucket about half full there. So I'm happy with that. I would have liked it higher. I always like it to have a little bit less headroom at the top, but I think we're gonna do just fine here. There's a few things we need to do, just clean up around the edges. We don't want anything. So I don't know if you can see this stuff here. We wanna get rid of that. This is just diluted star sand that I use when I, when I sanitize. It's important to make sure that the exposed areas at the top here are properly cleaned up, as well as the lid and anywhere else that might get exposure to air. The lid as well. I'm going to give this a bit of a spray. Um, what I find when I've done these fermentations before, where you rarely get some mold, the black mold that you don't really want, it's normally underneath the edge of the lid here, or it's on the top where the, uh, where the grommet is. So you want to get all that area as clean as you can, and it just gives this the best chance to ferment without any problems. So that lid is now ready to go on. This is a no rinse sanitizer, so I don't need to rinse this off and it'll be perfectly fine. So we're gonna stick that in the hole just there. And I use some salt water or brine to fill up the airlock to let it do its job. That's fine. So we've got the cap on the top now. The cap doesn't seal. I did get a question about that in one of my previous videos. Why do I put a cap on? Because you know you want the air to come out. But the cap doesn't actually seal. It just uh, covers the top so dirt doesn't get in. So that's ready. I'm gonna spray around the edge here because that's another area where you can get some problems with uh, bacteria, things like that. So I'll just give it a quick spray. It might seem overkill, but it's better safe than sorry. And I don't want to waste my peppers. I mean, it's the whole reason I do such a big fermentation in the first place. Uh, it's not because I really want to. I mean, the fact of the matter is I prefer fermentations with a few select peppers and try and get the flavors to mingle nicely. But this has its place as well. This is going to be a great all-rounder sauce. I know my family love it. They loved it when I made it last year. And I'm sure they'll love some of the changes that I made to it this year. So this is going to go into the Ferminator and we're going to come back to it in about three weeks time, maybe four weeks time. We'll see how it goes.
So actually this one doesn't look too bad. Do you see there just in front of the tip of the spoon, that little bit of white? Just there, that little bit of white. Again, a bit of growth, nothing to worry about at all. And I'm just gonna stir that straight in. I'm not taking it out, I'm not gonna be taking it out of this. But I'm just gonna give this a bit of a stir. Look at the liquid from underneath, all the, the brine that gets generated when you make a mash. Oh, the smells, this is gonna be so good. It's been just over two months now since we started this fermentation and it's time for us to actually make the sauce. I was meaning to do this probably a month after I started the fermentation, but just time got away with me. It's that time of year, Christmas and New Year's. So instead we've done this for two months, but from the looks of it, it's looking quite healthy. So let's open it up and let's look inside. That is looking perfect and it smells amazing. So in this here, we have probably have about three liters of hot sauce. I'm just gonna give it a quick stir. But look at that. That is just beautiful. There's the garlic that we added. I wish you could smell this. This is just amazing. Uh, the lemon's really coming through and the peppers. Um, oh, such a lot of interesting smells here. So today we're doing something a little different. I get a lot of questions on my channel from people asking about adding fruit to their fermentation, whether they should add it in the beginning, add it at the end, what should they do, how should they do it. So today I'm actually going to do something with fruit to just show you how I would suggest you use fruit in your fermentation. It really depends on what you're trying to get out of it. For me, the whole point of adding fruit is obviously the flavors, but it's also to add back a bit of sweetness into the fermentation. Obviously a fermentation uses up sugars, that's the lactobacillus, it eats up the sugars and the peppers, and that's what gives us the uh, lacto-fermentation, which is what increases the acidity, makes this safe. But at the same time, it also decreases the sweetness of the peppers. And if you wanna add back a bit of the sweetness, you're gonna be putting in things like fruit or maybe some sugar, things like that. But you gotta make sure that you're not going to be making the uh, fruit get fermented as well, because then the sugar just gets eaten up and you get some more fermented stuff in there, which is fine if that's what you're going for. But like I said, when I'm adding fruit, I wanna add back a bit of the sweetness. So that's what we're gonna to do today. Let's have a look at the fruits we're gonna be using. First up is a pineapple. Pineapple is just great in hot sauces. It has such a great flavor and it adds well, complements the hot sauce quite nicely. Next up is a mango. I used to eat mango acha quite a lot back in South Africa. It's a spicy mango type pickle thing and it's really, really good. So I'm gonna add some mango to one of the sauces. We then have some apricots. That'll be quite nice, I think. And lastly, we have a pomegranate. But with all these fruits, I am trying to make sure that the pH level is low enough so that it doesn't affect the hot sauce negatively. We want to keep that pH below 4.6 to make sure that it's going to maintain its shelf stability. So I'm going to test the hot sauce on its own and we'll see what the pH level is of that. And then we'll test once again once we've added in our fruits. These are the four fruits we're going to be using today and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So we've got them all nicely chopped up and ready for the next steps. And there we have it. The mango one is done and it's time to move on to the other ones. We're gonna be doing the pomegranate. So I'm gonna give that a try. That's a new one to me. I've never actually seen a pomegranate hot sauce. So let's see how that turns out. Strictly speaking, I should wash this out, but this is literally for my family and myself, so I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, some of the flavors might go in, but with the amount of pineapple we're going to be using here, I don't think there's going to be too much of a problem. So there was 500 grams of pineapple. Let's put in 500 grams of the Monster Mash. This smells 
very refreshing. Oh, you're going to love pineapple. Now, the pomegranate, I, I really want that flavor to come through quite strong. So I'm actually going to make this probably uh, two-thirds pomegranate and one-third Monster Mash. <laughs> Lastly, we're going to be doing the apricots. And I'm going to be making these one-third the Monster Mash and two-thirds the apricots, similar to how I did with the pomegranates. All that's left to do now is process the rest of this Monster Mash. Now I'm going to be mixing in a bit of vinegar, so about one quarter of vinegar to three quarters Monster Mash, and that's just to help it go a bit further. My family go through hot sauce so quickly that uh, I have to do that else they'll be begging again within a, a month and I'm not going to have any sauce for them. Uh, we've got a few, few months to go before we're going to have some more ripe peppers. Let's process this and get this ready. I'm sure it's going to taste fantastic. But before I do that, I need to test the pH level. I just want to see what the base pH level is of the sauce and see how well we did with our fermentation. And I'll also be able to compare that to what the end result is with the pH levels of the ones that I've mixed in with the fruit. To test the pH, we're going to be using our trusty pH meter. I have calibrated it, so it should be spot on. Let's give it a test. So that there settled on 3.9 on the pH scale, which makes it nicely acidic. It's definitely well below the 4.6, and I'm happy with that. So I will test the other sources, and I'll put it down here what they came out to on the pH scale in comparison to this one, which was 3.9. Um, and obviously, 3.9, that's for the base. That's just the Monster Mash itself. I'm going to be adding a bit of vinegar, so it's actually going to bring it down even further. I'm just using distilled white vinegar because uh, I don't want to impact the flavor of it with the vinegar. I actually want the flavor of the peppers to come through. But feel free if you want to use apple cider vinegar or some other flavored vinegar, go for it. Just try and make sure that it's uh, high acid. Typically distilled vinegar is 5% acetic acid. So just make sure that it is acidic enough. You want the pH level to be on the low side preferably under four if you're going to add it to this you just don't want to mess around with the ph levels too much so there we go i finished processing the monster mash as well so this is the plain monster mash with a little bit of vinegar in it and i'm sure my brother in particular is going to be quite happy with that there's one last step i need to point out here if i leave this as it is here this is the mango one if i leave it as it is right here you're going to have two problems. Number one is this is going to start fermenting again. It's going to start eating up all the sugars and it's going to decrease the sweetness of this. The second thing that's going to happen is it's going to start building up pressure. And when you open the top here, it's probably going to spray some stuff out at you. And that's not a good thing. So it's not the end of the world. If you want, you can leave this to ferment and uh, just burp it every other day or so. But that's not what I'm going for. So what you want to do is stick this inside the freezer. By freezing it, you're going to be able to kill off the majority of the lactobacillus that's still in here. If after you've frozen it and you let it defrost, you're just going to put it on the shelf, let it defrost for a day or so. Uh, if after that you're finding that it's still creating a bit of pressure in here, so you can sense that it is still fermenting, then you can stick it in the freezer again. The alternative way of doing this is you can go and cook this for a little while. So about 10 minutes or so uh, on a very low heat, a low simmer, you can do that. I don't like cooking my fermented hot sauces. I much prefer freezing them. It's just easier and also it works fine for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really enjoyed making this video and uh, I really enjoy sharing my experience with you guys. I hope you enjoy watching them. And uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so. It really helps my channel out and I do appreciate it. So until the next time, bye bye for now. They're coming.